for some more specifics um, about what you are, um, what questions you have with the um, assignment. I am probably going to shuffle some due dates around, all right? I may have even started doing that, but I may have been distracted and done it wrong. <laughs> so if you're, lo don't look at it right this minute, all right? Uh, I will, I will go up and I will, I will adjust the due dates to be where I wanted to because I wanted to push the dates back. I'm, I, I, but thinking about it now, I'm not sure. I was like doing it while I was eating lunch, and I might have changed the wrong assignment. I might not have, but I'll double check the due dates. Um, at any rate. Or I might have changed one and not the other or something. I don't know. Um, but let's look at the date stuff, and then, then we can see what other things that you have questions about concerning the functions. Maybe we'll give an overview of some of the functions. So here's the date stuff that we had last time. The one thing that is odd about this is we're not using an explicit constructor. Um, there is, um, um, in, in object-oriented design, there's something called like an object factory, which is an object who has a function that creates other objects. And in this case, we have a static function uh, on local date that um, creates a, a local date object. So we create it in a different way. So that's a little confusing, but, you know, it's it's possible. Um, in this case, the static function is called now. And what do I mean by a static function? A static function does not require an instance of the object to work. In other words, if you think back of the pizza example, to say the price of a pizza, we have to be talking about a specific pizza. I can't just say, what's the price of a pizza, right? Well, it depends, right? Is it small, medium, or large? Is it, is it uh, pepperoni or not pepperoni? What else is, is it stuffed crust or not stuffed crust? So that has to be on the instance level. That has to be on the object level because it depends on the specific instance that we're talking about. But there's some things that don't depend on the specific instance that we're talking about. And what the current time is doesn't depend on what date object or what the current date is, rather, or date and time, whatever, however you want to put it, that does not depend on which data uh, object you're looking at. All right? If you could have 50 date objects, and if you ask them all at the same time what day it is, they'll all give you the same result. So therefore, it does not need to be on an instance level. It can be on the class level. And the tip off here, that that's what's going on, is we have the class name here instead of an object name. Normally, in most, ex in most examples, in fact, all but one that I remember in this class, we've always had an object there where we say, we call a function, we give an object name here. But here we're giving a class. And therefore, that's a tip off that this is a static method. And again, this is used to create a new object so it returns a local date object. So this effectively replaces a constructor on the local date object. Why they do it this way? I don't know. They did. All right, that's, that's all I can say. They did it this way. I'm sure they had a reason. I'm not really sure what the reason is. All right. Interestingly enough, right below it is the other example of a static function that we've seen. System.out.println. Notice that system, again, is capitalized. That's a tip off that that is a class, that that is not an object. And therefore, system.out.println, we are calling a static method on the system class to print something out. So here's a way that we can get the current system date and a way that we can get the, a, a specific date. You can either give the day of the week, or the, the, the number of the month, rather, and the number of the day, or the name of the month and the name and the number of the day. I did find what I was missing. I think this is where we left off in class, as I had a problem with the one import. This was the import that I was missing. That's what 
gave me the error on this guy down here. It just took a little bit of, of research. Sometimes when I'm up here and I'm talking, if I make a mistake or something and I don't know it, you know, you get a little flustered and you're not thinking clearly. So that's why it's good to back off and do it. Yes? So this might have been explained Monday. I wasn't here. Okay. Uh, let's say you did the, like the local date change. Let's say you wanted it to test it against something that was two months ago from whatever the current date was. Is there a way to do that? Or no? Yes. Are there any other questions? No. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the question is, is how do you compare dates? Well, we'll let, let's, let's go through this example and we'll see if it answers your question. And if it doesn't, then we can, we can go and we can, we can build the example. Um, this creates a date that's now. This creates a date with a given year, month, day. This, creates, this also creates a date with a given year, month, day. All right? Um, the only difference is in one case we use the name of the, the month, in the other case we use a number for the month. This, strictly speaking, is an, enumer an, an enumeration. If you've had advanced C-sharp, you've probably seen enumerations. Maybe even intro to C-sharp. I don't know what class those are taught in. All right. So that's how you can create it. This is comparing dates, and I think this gets into your question. Um, I did the equal comparison to show you that that's not the way to do things. All right, because if you remember this one, even though we created both of these dates to be the 4th of July, this comparison shows that the dates are not equal. Why? Again, to reinforce the concept, when you compare an object, you are comparing pointers. This is asking, are these two literally the same object? not are these two different objects that happen to be for the same date. So there's a difference between that. All right. When you use the double equal sign, you are saying, are these the exact same object? Are these the exact same object? The one below it, where I say equals, is saying, do these two objects correspond to the same date? All right, so that's two different questions. Remember, the first one relates to the pointer in memory, in the stack. We create an object on the heap, and we store the pointer in a variable that's on the stack. So if I create two data objects, two separate date objects, like I've done here, if I ask if they're, compare, uh, if they're the same thing, they're comparing these two pointers. So even though both of these are created as being the 4th of July, if I ask if they're equal and use the double equal sign, it will tell me no. They're not equal because this pointer does not equal to that pointer. They would only be equal if the two variables pointed to the exact same object. So if I said y equals x, then they would both point to that one and it would show up as being equal. How do you get around that? Well, and this is not just, this is not only true with dates. This is true for any object. This is true for strings and, and so on you can use a equals method. Many objects have an equals method that looks to see if the value of this object equals the value of that object. So is the date that is contained in the date two object equal to the date contained in the date three object? And this one would turn out to be true because I've initialized both of these as the 4th of July. I think to sort of get to your question, for calculating due dates, we can take and we can add values to a date to get like a date in the future. All right? And likewise, we can subtract values uh, or subtract days. So what this says is, give me a date that is date one plus 28 days. So we'll do the calculation. It'll work on leap year. It will work 
regardless of how many days a month has, 31 or 30 or whatever. And then to compare if a date is after the date, you use the is after. Likewise, there's an is before. You can also calculate the date in between two dates. All right? This way. By saying, um, give me the difference between date one and the difference between date two. And you can do that forward and backwards. I don't know why I did this two times. I did the exact same thing two times. I'm thinking it does not look any different. Oh well. The what? Right. Right, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I did the same operation twice. I did it once and like this, here I did days between, here's I did days until. All right, so that's demonstrating two different things. This, I'm not really sure why I had that. That's kind of redundant with the other line. Oh, in other words, I did this. Date four, maybe that's what I wanted to do. Do this. I don't know. It didn't end up that way, but um, you could look up to see um, if it has that function. So let's think of, let's think of, let, let's write a little routine that will. Let's write, let's write a routine that will return the fine for something. All right? This isn't exactly what you have to do. It's, got, it's like a simplified version of what you have to do. So, in our simplified version, we're going to write a function that says calculate overdue. All right? So, I'm going to say that everything, that this can be checked out for 28 days. And the overdue fee is 25 cents per day. So that's the simplified version of this. Remember, in your example, you actually have different fines, and you have different number of days that something can be taken out, depending on the type of library material it is. Well, we're going to simplify it. We're going to say that um, 28, everything can be checked out for 28 days and everything is 25 cents. Now remember, you can build your program in a similar way. You don't have to implement all the features at once. So you could write a calculate fine function that did pretty much what I'm doing here, all right, as long as you go back and fix it before the final versions do. All right? So. At any rate, let's go and write this. Now, let's think about what we're going to do. This function, I'm going to write, it's going to accept as an argument Two dates. Okay. I'm going to write a function called calc fine. It's going to accept two arguments. 
the date that it was checked out and the date that it was checked in. Now your function probably won't need two arguments, right? Because you're already going to have the date checked out as an attribute of your library materials. So you won't need to pass it in the function. But you will need to, to pass in the date that it was checked in. Maybe. Maybe you could use the, the current date or something like that. We'll actually, we'll actually write two versions of this function um, at, at some point. All right. So let's do this. Let's calculate the fine. And this is going to return a double. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. I can actually probably get rid of these two. The, the longer, the, the, the later in the week it is, the more often I forget to switch the screen. I've noticed that. We're going to have I'm going to just call this test code. All right. And I'm going to create a function. Actually, I'm going to create a couple of functions. I'm going to create the main function. And I'm going to create a All right. So, public static double. Yours won't be static, of course. I'm making it a static function simply because of the way I'm writing this test code. So you can forget about the static when you actually write yours. Because yours is going to depend on the actual piece of library material that's, uh, that has a different checked out date. I'm going to accept two arguments, arg checked out and arg checked in. I'm going to do a calculation. And I'm going to return the fine, which is going to be a double. So I'm going to initialize fine at 0. All right, so I create the variable for fine, and I initialize it to 0. Now, what if, what if the material isn't overdue? How much is a fine? Zero, right? We have to be careful about that because we're going to be calculating the difference between days. And if we don't test to see which date is after which date, then we're liable to say that the, that the, the, the person gets a negative $3 fine and they get rewarded for turning the book in early. And I don't think we want to do that, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to see if the book is late. All right. How are we going to compare if the book is late? We have the date that it was checked out and the date that it was checked in. And we know that you have the book for 28 days. So how are we going to test that? How, what, what are we going to do first? We want to see if it's late. All right. What does late mean in object terms? Yes. We don't have a due date, but we can calculate a due date. We could do this a couple different ways. We could look to see how many days it's been since it's checked out. We could also calculate the due date and see if the due date is after the date checked in. So you actually could write it a couple different ways. Um, just for, for giggles, I don't know, for no good reason, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to calculate the due date. So how do we calculate the due date? 
The due date is what? Well, again, we, we said we're going to simplify this, so we're going to say everything is 28 days. A add 28 days to the days checked out. How do you add days? Well, we went over that in this example. So, I can say... Local date, due date, equals arg checked out plus days 28. So that will give us the due date. Now we have the due date. What are we going to do now? Well, if you're doing this by hand, if someone checks something out October 1st, when is it due? October 1st. Uh, it's due October 29th. All right, so if you check it out October 1st, it's due October 29th. All right, so how would you tell if it's late or not? What's the, today's date? That's what you'd ask. Or, we actually tell it the date. We say this is the date it was checked in. The thought being that maybe you were checking stuff in that was, we're, we're checking stuff in that someone returned over the weekend or something. So, what I want to do is I want to see if this date is after the due date. Right? If you check it in after it's due, then it's late. So, how do we tell if a date is after another date? Well, we look and say if the checked out, the checked in date is after the due date. Then it's late. Do we have to have an else here? Do we have to have an else here? No, why not? Right. If it's not late, then there's no fine. And we've already initialized the fine at zero. Here, we're going to calculate the fine. After we calculate the fine, what we're going to do is we're going to return the fine. All right? So we're going to return the fine. And the fine might be zero if it's not late, or the fine might be whatever based on if it's due. So how are we going to calculate the fine? What do we have to figure out? Well, what if it was due, what if we checked it out on the 1st and we returned it on the 30th? What would the fine be? It'd be one day, so it would be 25 cents. How did we get that? All right. We looked and we said, we went through this process. And this is a case where programming really forces you to sort of think through things at a very low level a step at a time. You kind of came up with that answer automatically. It was almost like you didn't even think about it, right? But you did think about it, right? The art of programming is to realize what your thought process was and write the code that does that. So what did you do? You mentally looked at says if it was checked out on October 1st, it was due on the 29th. The 30th is after the 29th, therefore it is late. How many days is it late? It is late one day, because from the 30th to the 29th is one day. How much is the fine per day? It's 25 cents, therefore the fine is 25 cents. Now, if it was returned on October 26th, you'd say it was checked out October 1st, it was, re it was due the 29th, it was checked in the 26th, therefore it was returned it was not returned after the due date, therefore there is no fine. So after we have determined that it is late, 
And that's what this test does. Again, Indians in the World Series, I'm in a great mood. I'm going to actually comment my code. Default fine to zero. If not late, that's what it is. Calculate due date. Date checked out plus 28 days. This effectively is asking is the book or is the material late? What's another way of saying it's late? A more precise programming way is if it was checked in after the due date. That's what a book being late is. So if it was checked in after the due date, then we're going to calculate the fine. So first, in order to calculate the fine, we calculate how many days is it late? Well, let's look here what is going to be useful. It sort of looks to me like this difference is useful. So I'm going to copy this in here. So how many days is it from the due date to the date that it was checked in? How many days have passed from the time that it was from the time that it was due till the time that it was checked in? That's how many days late it is. All right. I can then say find and then calculate find at 25 cents per day. And then I will say fine equals days late times 0.25. So I think this is code to calculate the fine. It makes sense. It emulated exactly the thought process that we went through. Is it late? If no, then there's no fine. If it is, then how many days is it late? Take that and multiply that by 25. Yes? Yeah, long is simply a long integer. Um, so yeah, we sh that, that should not be a problem. All right? So now we got to test this. So how are we going to test this? Well, we're going to make a couple of dates. And we're going to run this through scenarios. <laughs> um, so let's make one scenario where I make two dates. Date out and date in. So let's say I check it out October 1st. I'm going to keep the math easy on myself, right? So the first one was checked out October 1st. Let's test if this was checked in on October 4th. There should be no fine, right? So,
double fine one equals, I forgot to give this function a name. Calc fine. Fine one equals calc fine. Date out one. Date in one. And then I can system out print LN. Fine is plus fine one. Okay. Any questions on what I have so far? Here, here's our function. In your case, this function will be somewhere else. This function will probably be, there'll probably be a version of this function in one of your other classes. Your book class, your DVD class, and so on. Yes? Yeah. There actually is a function that would that you could look at and say like the date that it was purchased and then instead of saying plus days 28, there'd be a plus months and two and that would give you two months from that date. Right. Right. That's, that's a good thing to try out, to, to have, in other words, in your books class, the question was, you're going to have in your books class a date that it was purchased, and your assumption is going to be that, it was that anything that was purchased within the past two months was, is a new book and anything else is not. Yeah, that, that's fine. And you would use plus months then to determine the date that it is no longer new. All right, so we have this function. This is going to, again, live somewhere else. This is not going to live in your test case. This kind of function will be in your test case, though, where you're going to make updates and check things out and check things in and so on. So let's save this and compile it. Hope that it works. And then we'll run other test cases. So let's go to the desktop and let's compile compiled cleanly. Wow. I thought I'd have some typo in there. And let's run test code. Fine is zero, which is correct. So does that mean we get to go home? Oh, not so fast. <laughs> All right. And this is where thorough testing comes in. Um, I don't know if I would say I've ever seen people quite this bad, but I have seen people definitely get prematurely excited and think that they have code that works simply because they've run it through a test without being a thorough test. If I was going to test this thoroughly, what I would want to do is I would want to test where it's turned on time, where it's turned in on the day that it's due, where it's turned in the day after it's due, and then so many days in the future. All right? 
I would think to, to test even a small function, I would think four test cases you should, you should run this through. So I'm not going to go and change this and change this to the 29th or whatever. All right? I, I'm not going to go and do that. Why? Because I want this test to run every time I run my test code. Because what if I go and tweak that function? I notice a defect and I go back and tweak it. I want to make sure that it still works if it's, due, if it's turned in way early, if it's still turned in early. So I'm going to put comments in my code again. Wow. Don't expect this too much longer. But um, item returned early. And I'm just going to clone this a couple times. And I'm going to test this. Item returned on due date. I'm going to return it on the 28th. And I can do as many or as few of these as I am comfortable with. I'm pretty comfortable with this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this set of instructions two more times. Item returned day after due date. And finally, item returned a few days past due date. Now, you might say, well, do we need to test item return 10 days after due date, 11 days after due date, 12 days after due date? This is where you kind of have to be reasonable and say, we know how this function works, all right? We know that it's a calculation based on the number of days. So if we test these four, that should be sufficient. All right? Because um, otherwise, it would be impossible to test going out until the end of time to make sure. Ah, in the year 3050, there's a problem if they return it on April 1st. Well, OK, we'll take our chances with that. This is where knowing what the code looks like is helpful in designing your test cases. That's called, by the way, white box testing, where you can see, and, and white box isn't, is a misleading term, because it's not so much that the box is white, it's that the box is like glass. You can see through it. So you can see into your code, and you can know how to test it. So let's go in here. And I should know what the results are, right? First one should return $0 for a fine. Second one should return $0 for a fine. Third one should return $0.25 cents for a fine. The fourth one should return what? Let's see, the 29th would be a day late. The third, no, I did this wrong. It should be the 29th and the 30th because it's due the 29th and the 30th. And so 30th would be one day late, 31st would be two days late, November 1st would be three days late, November 2nd would be four days late. So the last one should be a dollar. So we should get zero, zero, 25 cents, and a dollar. And I could write that in my test plan. So guess what? If you could give this to someone that's a tester, that's not even a programmer, and say, I've changed all my classes, run these tests. And the tester just has to be thorough, run them, look and say, zero, zero, 25 cents, dollar. It works. It passed the test. All right. So I'll go compile this guy again. And I'll run it. Zero, zero, 25 cents, and a dollar. Thank you very much. I'm going to take off my mic and drop it and then walk out of the room. All right. So. Now we can be reasonably confident 
that this works. All right, we've tested four cases, and we designed those four cases deliberately to test right on the border. So if it's due, if it's turned in on a day that's due, if it's turned in the day after, it handles that. Because a lot of times that's the problematic uh, area. In programming, there's always a plus or minus question or should something be equal to, or less than or less than or equal to you know programmers are always struggling with that and that's that's definitely a case of something that could easily go wrong so by testing and designing your test cases you're reasonably assured that you can do that I'm going to do one more thing today for my next trick as 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 they say I'm going to overload this function all right what does overload the function mean? It means I have the same function, but I give it different arguments. What different arguments am I going to give it? I'm only going to give it one argument. I'm going to give it the date checked out, and I'm not going to give it the date checked in. So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to default the date checked in to the current date. Is it okay to have two functions that have the same name? Yes, it is. It's just like constructors, provided they have a different list of arguments. In this case, calculate fine accepts one date. In this other case, calculate fine accepts two dates. Now, I'm not going to duplicate this code. I am simply going to say, Well, and I think I messed up my braces. I'm going to create the date checked in. And I'm going to say return this dot calc fine and I'm going to pass the argument actually this is a shorthand So notice what I'm doing here. My real logic only lives in one of the functions. All right. There's only one way to calculate the due date and to calculate how many days it's late and to calculate the fine. I would not want to copy and paste that code into here because then that logic would exist in two places. What's the only difference between these two functions? One, I'm giving it the due date. And one is assuming to, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not the due date, the date checked in. In this case, I'm passing in the date checked in. In this case, I'm assuming the date checked in is the current date. So I write my function, calculate fine, and I go in and I take the checked out date, and then I create the date checked in. I default it to the current date. And then I can call this function to do the actual calculation. And whatever that function returns, I'm going to return from this function. So I'm like chaining these functions together. Very similar to what you can do with constructors. All right. You will often see that in, in code. You know, these functions that you overload are no different than constructors um, in that you, um, you know, you um, you have one has the most number of arguments, then each successive one has less arguments, and it simply takes and populates the other arguments with certain default values. 
I'll give you another example, simple, maybe it will help, maybe it won't. Let's say I had a uh, quadrilateral class, all right? And I could have calculate area. What's the area of a rectangle? It's, it's height times length, all right? I could have another one that calculated the area and only accept one argument, and the assumption then would be is it would be for a square, and it would assume that the height equals the length. So I'd only pass it the height, and it would call the other function and simply default the length to be the same as the height. Same idea here. My function that does the actual calculation requires those two arguments, but I could write a version of the function that only accepts the date in, or the date out rather, and assume that. So I probably should repeat these test cases for those. But because I'm lazy, I'm only going to do one of them. So in this case, I, I'm assuming it's checked in today. And I'm going to call this function and only give it that. And uh, it should default the current, um, the date in to the current date. And so it should tell me that this guy has no fine as well. Oh, I can't save this because it's a static method. Okay, and it tells that. Now that's not terribly meaningful. Um, it probably would be good to back things up a few days. So. Let's put it four days before. What's four days before? Let's give it like September 20th. Let's make sure it's really late. I would assume that's the right value. If it's due September 20th and return today, I would assume that it's eight days late. Because if it's due September 20th and 28 days from then would be September 48th, which is October 18th. October 18th was eight days ago. So eight times a quarter is $2. Okay, I hope this helps with a lot of the functions that you have to write. Um, to be sure, there are some things you're going to have to adapt. Namely, it's not going to be a static function. You're not going to need to pass the date in because that's already going to be an attribute. But you could do the same business with overloading the function of, of giving the date checked in and uh, giving um, and maybe defaulting it to the current date. Questions about this? Pardon me? Well, you can't use this because this is such a simplified case. Um, these are static functions. Yours won't be static. All right, they'll, be, they'll exist on the object level. Um, this assumes everything is, is 25 uh, cents a day and assumes everything is, is 28 days. So, I mean, it's a simplified version. I mean, you could adapt this to work, but you can't directly use, use this. You have to make a few changes. All right. Pardon me? Oh, why you couldn't use this? I'm sorry, I thought you meant why you couldn't use this code example. Um, you cannot use this because this means this object. And because these are static methods, there's no object involved. All right, remember, static means no object is needed, it runs on the class level. 
Okay. All right. I finally heard your question, uh, and, and, and that makes sense. All right. Uh, we'll see you up, uh, upstairs in lab. Uh, I do, again, being Wednesday, I do have to leave right at 10 until 3.